Dragon Age Origins, the game that released back in what is known today as the Golden Age of Bioware. That sweet spot between 2007 and 2011 where it seemed like Bioware could do no wrong and cemented themselves as arguably the best game developers of all time. Unfortunately though, this didn't hold up and with Dragon Age the Valgard on the horizon, it was time I visited this classic title and see what mods are available to improve the experience. What's up guys, it's your boy Lordology here and in today's video I'm going to be taking a look at and ranking my top 10 favourite mods for Dragon Age Origins that you guys need to try out. And as many fans know, Dragon Age Origins is several years old at this point and is really starting to show its age, so some of the mods on this list are quality of life improvement mods that honestly improve the experience overall. I'll also be putting any extra mods that I mention in the description of this video with some honourable mentions as well. And I would also like to say that I am a newcomer to the Dragon Age franchise and it's thanks to content creators like Wolfheart FPS, Salt Factory and Big Dan Gaming that I even got into the Dragon Age series. And even as a newcomer to the DA trilogy, it's already becoming one of my favourite series of all time. And with that being said, let's get into it. Coming in at number 10, we have the Extra Dog Slot. This mod is essential for any player that wants to take on the Human Noble Origin. As most players, once they get their fellow companions, they usually won't want to bring their furry friend along with them, which as a Human Noble makes no sense because of the close relationship that you have with your dog. So this mod ensures that even if you don't choose to have your dog in your party, the dog will still come along anyway as an extra party member. And the great thing about this mod is that you get to see all of the dialogue with NPCs that react to having your dog companion with you as well as having an extra party member to take on Nightmare difficulty with. A very straightforward mod, but essential nonetheless for any Dragon Age Origins player. Now coming in at number 9, we have the Character Respecialization mod, or Respec mod for short. Basically, this mod spawns a crow NPC that appears throughout the world of Ferelden, and if you choose to interact with it, it will gift you with a potion that allows you to respec your character to create any build that you want. This mod is pretty essential for min-maxing your party members, especially on Nightmare difficulty, where tactics and builds are pretty essential to survive many of the difficult combat encounters. And even with my first Origins character, I wanted to have a dual longsword wielding warden, but the problem with choosing the warrior class is that an ability point immediately gets assigned to the sword and shield skill tree, which means that you have an ability point that's essentially useless to my playable character. So this mod ensures that I can respec that ability point to any others that I want, and it also means you can redistribute your stats as well. So if you want to be a strength based warrior, or a dexterity based warrior, or even have a warrior with high cunning to ensure you're constantly getting crit damage, the sky is the limit with the builds in this game, and this mod ensures you can try them all with all of your companions in one playthrough. Coming in at number 8, we have the Natural Bodies All-in-One mod. If you're a player that's experienced Baldur's Gate 3 before Dragon Age Origins, then this is a mod that you're going to really appreciate. It basically gives you the functionality to edit every race in the game and change the body shape of every character. And when I say body shape, I mean literally every part of the NPCs and playable characters' bodies and body parts you can edit and change to your heart's desire. Now I really appreciate more mature mods like this as it makes the world of Dragon Age feel more realistic and much more mature. Even though the game is already pretty heavy on all of its themes, this mod further increases that level of brutality and immersion. And what I mean by that is, for example, in the Return to Ostagar DLC, when you find King Kaelin with this mod installed, he actually won't be wearing anything, which I think makes more sense given how brutal the Darkspawn actually are, and how they would shame the former King of Ferelden. Of course, you can pair this mod with the Better Romance Scenes mod and the Last Night with Morrigan mod that basically tweaks several animations and adds some new ones and makes the Romance Scenes in-game much more for older audiences. These two mods are definitely more catered to mature audiences and of course, this game is already dark as it is, but this makes it so that the Game of Thrones influence on Dragon Age is even more prevalent as there is nothing left to the imagination. Of course, I can't show the scenes of this mod in this video for obvious reasons, but I will be featuring censored versions of all of these mods in my Dragon Age Origins modded walkthroughs that you guys can check out here on the channel. Now coming in at number 7 is the Tower of Ishar mod. This mod essentially restores a cutscene that's supposed to play after the Warden and Alistair get swarmed by the Darkspawn, 
and it shows us how the two characters survive the Battle of Ostagar, because without this mod installed, and in the base game, basically the Wardens get ambushed by the Darkspawn, pass out, and wake up in Flemish Hut in the Kokari Wilds, and we as the players have no idea how they got there. This mod remedies this by showing us how Flemeth in her dragon form saves the Warden and Alistair. And it gives us this scene very reminiscent to the Lord of the Rings trilogy where the Eagles save Frodo and Sam from Mount Doom. At least that's what this modded scene reminded me of. And I would also pair this mod with the Farewell Duncan mod that gives Alistair and Duncan a much more meaningful moment where they both shake hands and share a meaningful glance with each other, which again, with the Tower of Ashar mod, makes the Battle of Ostagar much more impactful and makes us as the players feel the weight of what's taking place even further. I cannot recommend these two mods enough for a much more immersive Dragon Age experience. Now coming in at number 6, we have the Universal Die Kit mod. This mod is a great quality of life improvement mod that basically adds the function to change and edit any of the base game armors to have whatever color scheme or style that we as the players could ever want. So if you wanted all of your party members to have black and red outfits for example, then you can absolutely do that with this mod. And that level of control over how your party members can look both aesthetically and stylistically is a must have for Dragon Age Origins. And of course this mod has the added benefit of also allowing you to access the enchantment menu, regardless of where you are in the world. So instead of having to return to camp to change or swap out enchantments, this mod gives you the ability to do it wherever and whenever you want, which is a must have and excellent quality of life improvement for Dragon Age Origins. Sorry about that Sandal. Enchantment? Enchantment! Now coming in at number 5 on this list is the No Helmet Hack Mod. Now this is just my personal preference, but I actually like to see the faces of my characters and party members when I'm playing my games. And a game like Baldur's Gate 3 for example, gives you the option to hide whatever headpiece or helmet that you're wearing in the inventory menu. And unfortunately, because Dragon Age Origins is a much older game, it doesn't have this particular function. So with this mod, you're able to still gain all the benefits and stats of wearing a helmet, but without the need to see it in gameplay, which I much prefer for aesthetic reasons. And the good thing about this mod is that you can switch it off or on whenever you want from your inventory menu. So whenever you feel like seeing your helmet, you have that option. I also need to mention that this mod doesn't work in the DLCs like Awakening, Golems of Angarak and Witch Hunt, which isn't really much of a big deal because you'll already be max level with the best upgrades by that point of the game, so wearing a helmet by that point is kind of redundant and not necessary, except for that final boss fight in the Golems of Angarak DLC, which is arguably the hardest boss fight in the Dragon Age trilogy, and for that fight I'm not ashamed to admit I did indeed wear a helmet for a boost in stats because that boss on Nightmare difficulty can be very difficult to overcome. Now coming at number 4, we have the Lockbash mod. Now if you're a DA player that doesn't usually play the Rogue class, then this mod is absolutely essential, as it basically allows a warrior or mage to break up to level 2 to 3 locks, at least in my testing, which is an excellent quality of life improvement if you don't want to miss out on any of the different parts of the game. And this mod does run the risk of destroying some of the contents in the chests that are locked, so even though you get the benefit of opening most chests and doors, it adds that extra level of risk so that it makes it feel more immersive and it's still recommended to bring along a rogue character like Leliana or Zevran to open most locks. Now there are two extra mods that I think are essential that should be paired with this mod or otherwise you'll be running into several issues like being over encumbered for example, which is why I would recommend the expanded inventory mod, which basically doubles the amount of weight you can carry from the start of your playthrough. Because if you're going to be looting all the chests and breaking all the locks, then you're going to need room to carry and store all of those items. Which brings me to the second essential mod to use with the Lockbash mod, which is the Camp Storage mod. Which basically gives you several chests and armor stands that allow you to store all of your gear, weapons and crafting components, which makes inventory management way easier. And makes the game much more enjoyable as well. And if you don't really care for inventory management and just want to have one place to store all of your loot, then I can also recommend the Quartermaster Tolby mod, which adds an NPC to your camp that allows you to store all of your items in one place. These mods are pretty essential and I would say almost required to fully enjoy the Lockbash mod to its fullest extent. Now coming in at number 3 is the underrated AP Neural Enhanced Textures mod. 
Basically, this mod gives a facelift to all of the outdated textures in the game, and it gives it a much more pleasing experience overall. And it is quite performance friendly, and I would highly recommend using AP textures over the more popular JB3 textures, as I found that the textures in the JB3 mod made my game really unstable, and I had constant crashes while testing it even on a 3080 GPU. So I would highly suggest that you use AP neural textures as they are just as good and way more stable in-game when using other mods. I would also suggest that you pair this mod with the environmental overhaul mod as this upscales several models in game like food, barrels, benches and tables to name a few and it looks fantastic when paired with the AP neural textures mod and makes the game look way more pleasing and much more palatable when playing it now compared to the original version of the game. Now coming in at my number 2 slot is the Grey Wardens of Ferelden mod. This mod basically gives you Dragon Age 2 style armors and weapons and changes the appearances of all of the Warden NPCs in Origins into wearing all their Warden armors from DA2 along with being equipped and using all of the Warden style weapons as well. From a continuity perspective this mod is an absolute must when playing Origins. Meeting Alistair for the first time while he's wearing his Warden armor along with the Warden sword and shield just makes him feel and look like an actual Grey Warden, unlike the base game armor that he has. The mod also gives Duncan Warden Commander armor, which looks really cool, but in my playthrough I decided to remove the Duncan files from the Wardens of Ferelden mod, and replace those files with an alternative Theodosian appearance for Duncan, that I personally much prefer, which honestly is really cool that you can tweak and customize this mod to your liking. And another cool aspect of this mod is that once you complete the joining at Ostagar and become an official Grey Warden, the mod gives you Warden armor that looks different depending on your chosen class, which from an immersion perspective is bloody awesome. And the armor itself is pretty decent, but not too overpowered, so it's perfect for both a gameplay and immersion perspective. This mod also comes with several different texture packs that gives the Grey Warden armor some really cool appearances, and my personal favorites would have to be the Grey Warden B texture pack, and the Dragon Knight texture pack. There are of course several more textures than those two, but they're my personal favorites from an aesthetic standpoint. Another cool mod that you can pair with the Grey Wardens of Ferelden mod is the Grey Warden Runic armor mod, which gives you a really unique pair of Grey Warden weapons and armor that look awesome, which also have decent stats and from a lore perspective looks badass, especially when you use this armor in the end game when you're fighting against the Archdemon. Now coming in at my number one spot, and arguably my favourite mod on this list, is the Dragon Age Redesigned mod. This mod basically replaces and updates all of the NPCs and companions in game, in both the base game and DLCs, which makes this mod a must have for any Dragon Age Origins player. This mod also has the benefit of having three versions available to the player to choose from, which are the lore, recommended and aesthetic versions. Now I think each of them are pretty self-explanatory, but basically the lore version stays close to the original vision of Bioware and is more close to the lore accurate descriptions of each race and character. The recommended version, which is my personal favourite, balances the original vision of Bioware with much more pleasing character models and the aesthetics version is for much more pleasing and attractive looking character models that is primarily focused on appearance. The great thing about this mod is how customizable it is, and how it lets you pick and choose all of the different character models. Like for example, there are several different companion appearance mods that are packed into DA Redesigned that you can choose from, or alternatively, not choose any of them, and pick a different mod that changes the appearance of your companions, like I did with Sten in my playthrough for example. The amount of choice and customizing that you can do with this mod is absolutely fantastic, and is absolutely required whenever you're doing a new playthrough of Dragon Age Origins. I also need to mention that there are several mods that personally I think are not only needed to make this mod work, but overall improve the experience when paired with Dragon Age Redesigned, and those mods are Pineapple Tree's Vibrant Colors mod, which adds 48 new hair colors, 40 new skin tones, and 30 new eye colors that change and edit several of the appearances of the NPCs in DA Redesigned. And this mod can also be used in Character Creator as well. The next mod that should be paired with DA Redesigned is the More Hairstyles mod, which gives way more hairstyle options in the Character Creator, and also pairs really well with the required mod for DA Redesigned, which is the Tucked Hair mod, which is required when you're using the recommended and aesthetic versions of the mod. Now I also need to mention that to get more hairstyles and vibrant colors working properly, you are going to need the Charge and Morph compiler, 
which you can find on Nexus Mods, that automates and combines charge and XML files that are found in character creator mods like more hairstyles and vibrant colors. And it just ensures that these mods work properly together for the best experience. Now I can't do this game justice without having some honourable mentions and bonus mods that I think work really well with all of my top 10 mods listed and are also great additions to have in any playthrough. Now my first honourable mention is the White Teeth mod. For those that don't know, the colour of NPC's teeth in Dragon Age Origins are really disgusting to look at and have a real yellow look to them, which isn't that nice to look at. And the great thing about this mod is that it gives all the NPCs in game white teeth and while not exactly lore accurate, I think everyone can agree that this particular mod is an absolute must on any Dragon Age Origins playthrough. Coming in at my second honourable mention is the Quinn's DAO Fix Pack, which addresses most of the dialogue, quest, scripting, plot and item bugs that are still present in the base game, for which there are many. And this mod does the tremendous job of fixing many of those issues, so that Dragon Age Origins has very few issues when playing on PC, which is an absolute must have in any playthrough. You can also pair this mod with the ZDF dialogue fix, which works fantastically well with DAO fix pack by addressing several dialogue inconsistencies in game, depending on the choices that you've made, and is absolutely another mod that's needed when playing Dragon Age Origins. My third honorable mention would have to be the skip the fade mod. Now for anyone who's played Dragon Age Origins already, I'm sure you're very aware of the Tower of Magi quest that takes you into the Fade after meeting the Sloth Demon, but arguably the most tedious part of the base game. Well, no more. This mod ensures that all skill point rewards are awarded to you, and after you defeat Fade Duncan and use the pedestal, the mod will teleport you to all of your companion nightmares, and once you've rescued all of them, the mod will take you straight to the final boss fight with the Sloth Demon, which makes this part of the game much more satisfying, and less of a grind when on your next playthrough. Because let's be honest, this game is long enough without having to include the Fade, which makes this mod an absolute must on any subsequent playthroughs. Now my fourth honourable mention would have to be the Sleep Until Dawn mod, which is more of a quality of life mod that basically allows you to go to bed by yourself, with your dog, or your romance partner, which makes this mod a nice little addition to anyone's playthrough. And it also adds a day version to the camp, which I find to be a great addition to the game. And I would also like to mention that you can pair this with several other romance mods like Alistair's Nightmare, Morrigan's Restored Content, Liliana's Stories or Liliana's LRS Romance Scenes, which are all great additions, but I can't really recommend one over the other because these mods are dependent on the choices you've made in your playthroughs, which deserves a mention, but are not necessary like the other mods on this list. Now my final and fifth honourable mention is the FTG UI mod. Now if you're going to play Dragon Age Origins on PC in any resolution above 1080p, like most PC players such as myself, then this mod is probably one of the most important mods for PC players. It basically scales most of the text and fonts in your inventory and codexes so that you can actually read them. Unfortunately, this mod doesn't work for the tutorial text or the ability UI, but personally it's not really that much of an issue compared to how small the text in the base game inventory is. And this mod does the fantastic job of making everything readable so you don't have to be face to face with your monitor in order to read any of the text in game. And also the mod is customizable so you can scale several of the changes in the mod to your own liking. And that ladies and gentlemen is the end of my top 10 essential mods for Dragon Age Origins with 5 honourable mentions. Now before you comment, I am aware that I mentioned way more than 10 mods in this video, but with how mods work in Dragon Age Origins, I couldn't really make this list without giving you guys all of the extra mods and details that are needed to have the best overall experience. And the 10 mods that I listed are definitely the ones I would most recommend, and the others are great additions to those 10. If you guys agree with my mod list or have any more mod suggestions, then please do let me know in the comments. Now this video took much longer to make than I was expecting, as I ended up doing two separate playthroughs to ensure that everything worked correctly with each other, so I could recommend it in this video. So if you guys enjoyed it, found it helpful or informative, then please do consider giving it a like as it would help me out immensely. And if you would like to see more Dragon Age content, 
mod lists and future Dragon Age The Valguard content, then consider subscribing. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my current channel members who help support my content and if you guys would like to become members it's only one Aussie dollar and you get early access to my videos, frequent content updates, input on the channel, members only videos, custom badges and emojis and get mentioned at the end of my videos. With that being said I hope that all of my fellow wardens all have a fantastic day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.